We now learn how to find the variance as well as the standard deviation of a discrete random variable, and we'll do that with an example. We're told that a discrete random variable, capital X, can take on the values 1, 2, 3, and 4. We're also told that it has a probability distribution function, that is, the probability that the discrete random variable equals to x is equal to x over 10. We're then asked to find the variance as well as the standard deviation of this discrete random variable. Okay, well to do that I'll start by shrinking this a bit and moving it to the right hand side here, like so, and now we can get started. To begin with, let's calculate the variance. To do this we're going to need a formula, and the formula for the variance is the following. VAR, as in variance of capital X, is equal to E of capital X squared minus the square of the mean, so that's minus mu squared. And I'll just go ahead and box this result, and if you haven't seen it before, make sure to make a note of it now. Looking at this formula, we've seen the mean mu before, but this term might be new. We have e of x squared, that's the expected value of the square of the discrete random variable, capital X. Now the formula for this is the following. e of capital X squared is equal to the sum of the product of the square of the values that the discrete random variable can take, those are the lowercase x's, with their corresponding probabilities. So that's the probability that the discrete random variable equal to x. And we know from the question that the discrete random variable can take on the values 1, 2, 3, and 4. So using that fact, we can go ahead and rewrite this sum as follows. This should equal to 1 squared times the probability that the discrete random variable capital X equal to 1 plus 2 squared times the probability that it equal to 2, plus 3 squared times the probability that it equal to 3, and finally plus 4 squared times the probability that it equal to 4. Now each of these probabilities is calculated with the probability distribution function that we're given in the question. That is, the probability that the discrete random variable equal to x is equal to x over 10. So all we need to do for each of these probabilities is replace the x inside the probability distribution function by the value of x that we're interested in. So this turns into the following. It's equal to 1 squared times 1 over 10 plus 2 squared times 2 over 10 plus 3 squared times 3 over 10, plus 4 squared times 4 over 10. Taking care of all the square numbers, that turns into 1 times 1 over 10, plus 4 times 2 over 10, plus 9 times 3 over 10, plus 16 times 4 over 10. Now, taking care of all the products, it turns into 1 over 10, plus 8 over 10, plus 27 over 10, and finally plus 64 over 10. And adding all of these together, we find that it is equal to 100 over 10. Finally, E of capital X squared is equal to 10. Now that we know E of X squared, we need to calculate the mean. And remember, the formula for the mean was the following mu is equal to the sum of the product of the values that the discrete random variable can take, so that's lowercase x, with the probability that the discrete random variable take on those values, so that's capital X equals to x. And now once more, using the fact that the discrete random variable can equal to 1, 2, 3, or 4, we can state that the mean is equal to 1 times the probability that the discrete random variable equals to 1, plus 2 times the probability that the discrete random variable equal to 2, plus 3 times the probability that it equal to 3, and finally plus 4 times the probability that it equal to 4. 
Now, once more, we find each of these probabilities using the probability distribution function that was given in the question. Remember, that was x over 10. This turns into 1 times 1 over 10 plus 2 times 2 over 10 plus 3 times 3 over 10 plus 4 times 4 over 10. Taking care of all of these products, we find that's equal to 1 over 10 plus 4 over 10 plus 9 over 10 plus 16 over 10. And now adding all of these together, we find that that's equal to 30 over 10. And finally, we can state that the mean mu is equal to 3. Now that we have both of the values e of capital X squared and mu equals to 3, we can go ahead and calculate the variance using the formula we saw. To do that, I'll start simply by shrinking this a bit to have enough space. There we go. Remember, we saw that the variance of the discrete random variable was equal to e of capital X squared minus the square of the mean. That will therefore equal to 10 minus 3 squared, where I'm using both of the results we found previously. That leads us to 10 minus 9, and finally we can state the variance of this discrete random variable is equal to 1. Now that we know the variance, we can go ahead and calculate the standard deviation. And the formula for the standard deviation is the following. Sigma, which is the Greek equivalent of the letter S, is equal to the square root of var of capital X. In other words, it's the square root of the variance of the discrete random variable. Now, using the fact that we found the variance equals to 1, this will equal to the square root of 1, and finally, the standard deviation is equal to 1. And there we have it. That's how we calculate the variance as well as the standard deviation of a discrete random variable. Now, it's important to know what this standard deviation of 1 actually means. And the important thing to realize here is that the standard deviation should always be read alongside the value of the mean. Remember, we found mu equals to 3. So let's try and put this into a bit of context to explain what is meant by the standard deviation. Let's say we have a wheel numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4, and that an experiment consists of spinning that wheel and making a note of the number on which it stops spinning. Something that would look like this. We can see that we have a wheel numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4, and that it's spinning. Now, we notice right away that the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 correspond to the values that our discrete random variable can take. Furthermore, we also see that the area or the portion of the wheel that each of these numbers takes is different for each number. Consequently, the probability that the wheel stop on any one number will be different. In fact, the probability that the wheel stop on any one number will be given by the probability distribution function, which was x over 10. Now, say we repeat this experiment a large number of times, and that for each experiment we write down the number on which the wheel stopped spinning. Then, after a large number of trials, we'd be likely to come up with a list of numbers looking something like this. 4, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 1, 3, 2, and so on. The list would go on. Then, the mean, mu equals to 3, tells us that if we were to calculate the average of all of these values, it would get close to 3. And the more times we repeat this experiment, in other words, the more trials we do, the closer to 3 that average would be. The standard deviation, sigma equals to 1, tells us, on average, how far these values would be from that mean of 3. In other words, the standard deviation is a measure of how dispersed x is on either side of the mean. And there we have it. That's it for this tutorial, everyone. We've seen how to calculate the variance, as well as the standard deviation of a discrete random variable, and how to interpret the result we get. I really hope that helped, and if it did, please hit like on this video and even subscribe to our channel, because that really does help us. I'll see you soon.